In today's episode, I wanted to talk to you all about donkeys. And if you're thinking about keeping one or two, to give you a few tips. And these two are in our animal barn here at the Cotswold Farm Park with goats and sheep and cows all around and lots of visitors coming to see them. This is Shake and her foal, who's about a month old, little sugar. And so we'll come back and see more of these later, but I've got lots more donkeys to show you. Well, here's some of the rest of our donkey herd. We've got Ivy, Clover, and then this is Neddy. And of course, this great big thing isn't a donkey. This is our Suffolk Punch that's getting in the way. Go on, out the way, Victoria. Go on, walk on, walk on. And if anybody's thinking about keeping a donkey, there are some basics about what they require. So a reasonable size field, so they've got plenty of exercise good solid fencing to keep them safe. Donkeys don't have grease in their hair, or certainly not as much as a horse does, and so they do need shelter. We've got a shelter over there just so they can get out of the rain. And then of course, nutrition-wise, grass and hay is plenty for them. They do love a treat, but you don't want to give them too much protein. They don't need a lot of extra grub. And one of the reasons is that, because you don't want them getting too fat. If they get over fat, they can get a thing called laminitis, which is a swelling in the lamina in their foot that's very, very painful. And as far as the rest of their health goes, donkeys do carry stomach worms, so you can test their dung for worms, and then you can give them anthelmintics, which is a drug that gets rid of those stomach worms if you need to. Their feet are very important, so they have to have their feet trimmed three or four times a year, minimum really, but the most important thing is just to check they're not getting too long. So Neddy here has got lovely smart feet, but if they get long, they start to grow and eventually they will curl up and that's a very bad sign. And also what you want to be doing, if you just stand out of the way, you just want to pick their feet up. There's a good boy. And then you use a uh, hoof pick, but actually I forgot to bring one with me. So a set of car keys will do. And then you just pick out any mud, make sure there's no stones in there causing them any discomfort. Really, you don't need to check their hooves that regularly. It's only if they're looking like they're feeling a bit sore or a bit lame. We'll pick ours out sort of every week or two just to make sure they're all right. We check the donkeys every day to make sure they're fit and healthy. There we go. That's fine. And then the farrier is the expert who can advise if they've got any problems with their feet. That looks very good, Neddy. What a good boy. You can see how lovely and quiet they are, particularly if you handle them a lot. Of course, all animals in all species have got different temperaments, a bit like us. And occasionally you do get one that's a bit angsty or a bit angry. You might put them in with sheep and it'll chase the sheep and won't like sheep. So you just have to sort of judge their character. But we're very lucky. All ours are very friendly. So as creatures to keep, what are they like? Well, as you can see, they're gorgeous, sociable creatures. And unlike horses and ponies, they get very unflustered. So if there's a loud bang or a sudden movement, they're pretty calm and relaxed. Where little Exmoor there, would be a lot more jumpy. And they do like company. Like all equines, they're herd animals. They like to have people or other animals around them. And so we keep our donkeys in a group, but obviously with other horses. And if you've only got one, they will make friends with a goat or a pony or another animal of some description. But I would generally recommend having two donkeys if you can. So the different sexes, the male donkey here, Neddy, is a jack. That's what the word is used for a male donkey, a jack. Some people would call them a stallion, but they're generally a jack donkey. And the female, like Clover here, is a jenny. And they come different colours, as you can see. So we've got white, brown, and then they come scubold as well. And a lot of donkeys, in their colouring, 
or most of them really, have got a cross on their back. And it even exists on the white ones. You can just make it out. And the tale goes that it's because Jesus rode them to Bethlehem and then the donkey was even there for his crucifixion. And that's the mark of Jesus' cross as a thank you. Well, there we go. Quite interesting, really. So donkeys have got very sharp teeth. And it's always important when you're feeding any animal, really, that you hold your hand nice and flat so they don't bite your hand. Quite difficult for a child who's only got a little tiny hand. So you have to be very, very careful with them. Hold your hand flat and then they'll just eat off the surface of your hand. Because if you look in their mouths, they've got these sharp gnashes. And if they bite down on you, they can really hurt you. And that's how they'll fight. So they'll bite each other and kick each other. If you've ever seen videos or films of wild donkeys or asses fighting, they'll just gnash out at each other. So they can give you a nasty bite if they wanted to. And they do like to come up and give you a bit of a, a nuzzle and a push and sometimes a bit of a nibble, which is actually a sign of affection. But uh, you've got your ears back. Looking at their characteristics, you can see this one has got her ears back, which means they're feeling a bit angry. It's a sign of aggression when they put their ears back. They're generally doing it to each other because they're now trying to warm the pony off here who would like a little treat. There we go. Little golden boy. This is one of my Exmoors. He's a castrated male who's really lovely and where now actually we're looking to sell him. So if anybody wants an Exmoor, this could be your man. <laughs> so donkeys have been around for thousands of years and of course they originated from the wild ass and now we've domesticated them and there are lots of different types of donkeys all over the world. So there's the great big French Poitou, there's the American mammoth donkey, there's lots of donkeys all across Europe into Asia and in Africa. As far as their purpose, they're lovely to have about as pets, they're gorgeous creatures. But all over the world, really, donkeys are renowned or known for being creatures of burden. They'll work. So you can put panniers, which are big containers over their back, so they'll carry a load. Generally, in the UK, there are lots of clubs now, and you'll see donkeys pulling carts at shows and those sorts of things. And really lovely to see when they're all brushed and shampooed and smart in their beautiful head collars, pulling little carts around. Lovely for children, actually, although they can be quite strong. So Neddy here is trained to pull a cart. So we have had him in a bridle and with reins, just getting used to driving around before we put him back in a cart, which we might do in a few days' time, hopefully. There we go, aren't you lovely, Neddy? But you can just see how lovely and friendly and cuddly they are. I think they're wonderful creatures. We've had them on the farm ever since I can remember, when I was a little boy. In fact, we had a jack, a white one, um, called Teddy Bear. It was my first donkey, and I remember him very well. Right, so I suppose the next thing we ought to talk about is breeding donkeys. So we've got a jack and a jenny, a male and a female. Obviously, the jack will mate with the female, and then the gestation period from mating to birth is about 12 months, but it can range from anything around 10 and a half to 11 months through to 13 months. So quite a wide ranging gestation. And then of course, you get the donkey foal that we met earlier. So let's go back and see some more donkey foals. So this Jenny is called Dove and her baby is Dawn. And Dawn now is about eight months old and ready to be weaned. She probably should have been weaned a little bit earlier, but you can see she's got this beautiful colouring on her with grey and white, and there's the cross on her back as well. And they're lovely, lovely donkeys. And <laughs> you can see little Dawn is quite playful and she's becoming a bit of a size now. So we'll need to halter train her, put a head collar on her, get her used to being walked about and soon she'll be weaned. So we'll take her away from her mum, put her in with the rest of the herd, and she'll start her adult life. And then in a year or two years time, we'll then put her to a jack and she'll be able to have her own foal. But of course she can't go back to Neddy 
because that's her dad. So we'll have to get a new Jack Donkey, won't we? And they're gorgeous, these, because they've got these beautiful colours on them. I really love the coloured donkeys. Right, don't be naughty. And who have we got over there? And in the background is young Mayflower. Aren't you lovely? You're not quite so friendly, are you? <laughs> Look at your great big ears. <laughs> she is very lovely, aren't you? The softest bit of a donkey is this, right on the end of their nose. It's like velvet. Just lovely with their whiskers. So Dawn is absolutely gorgeous. But of course, the sweetest donkey on the farm at the moment is Little Sugar. So let's go and see her. Come on, Little Sugar. Come on. <laughs> There's your mummy. Did you lose her? It's just because you're running around so much, being naughty. Come on, you stick with your mummy. So I've brought Shake and Sugar out into the field to give Sugar a little bit of exercise, which she is making the most of. And she's charging around <laughs> having such a lovely time. When she was in the shed earlier, you could see how cuddly she was and friendly, but they do like to stretch their legs and are quite quick. And so now she will stay with her mum for six to eight months and obviously drinking milk. Donkeys have got two teats, one either side, and providing that delicious milk for little <laughs> sugar who will be moving on to hard food as well, starting to graze and starting to eat a little bit of hay, but still very much reliant on mother's beautiful rich milk. And so this is the head collar. Very simple contraption really that just goes around the nose and over the back behind their ears with a lead rein on, and then you can just control their heads and walk them around. It's doing loop the loops, you're making me dizzy sugar. <laughs> and with a donkey when you're leading it you should never wrap the lead around your hand because if they suddenly lurch backwards or pull particularly if it's a very strong donkey they can get it caught up around your fingers and it can hurt you a lot in fact if it gets really caught you can get dragged and it can dislocate your arm and cause all sorts of damage so always hold it in such a way that if the donkey really does need to pull and get away from you you can let it go but then you can use voice commands with them. They're very responsive to being trained. And so you just use walk on and whoa for stop. And the walk on, walk on, and then a little pull and then release. And they'll walk. And then to stop, whoa, and you just hold them slightly. So walk on and release, walk on and whoa and stop. There we go. Very easy. So, if I can get little sugar, come on, oi! Well, I don't think she's ever going to stop going round and round in circles. Of course, when donkey foals are born, they're really fluffy, like soft teddy bears. And as they get older, they lose their foal fluff, and then they get more coarse hair, like the mature donkeys. And because they're so fluffy, and so cheeky. They are probably one of the sweetest baby animals. So there we go. I hope that's given you a bit of an insight on how to look after donkeys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. Come on, let's take you back.